Glory Divine World Ministries is a place to call home. Come and allow God to unleash your potential, purpose, and destiny. The way, the truth, and the life, and nobody comes to the Father except through Him and through the blood of Jesus. Because of His unconditional love, hallelujah, He sent His only begotten Son, and that is Jesus Christ, to die so He can reconcile Himself to you. to come and be a part of our glory divine family you never choose jesus he chose you welcome to glory divine network tv with your host apostle ryan suknanan let's get ready to listen to the divinely inspired word of god we commit the servant of your own heart father which you have given to us heavenly father as he's gonna minister the word we believe heavenly father that he's gonna speak thus says the lord and the honest viewers oh god they shall be blessed and everybody will be blessed even those that are still coming to watch oh god we thank you heavenly father that your word will come alive into our lives we thank you heavenly father that even lord the testimonies will come we thank you lord this morning oh god that when the praises go up your glory will come down we thank you father for your presence in the name of jesus we have prayed amen amen praise the lord i believe rain it's a blessings from the lord amen hallelujah and i know that we need more rain in our country hallelujah praise the lord i greet you all in the powerful name of my lord and savior jesus christ amen David says, I will enter his gates with thanksgiving in my heart. Says, I will enter his courts with praise. I believe you are here with a thanksgiving heart in our midst. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Are there any worshippers in this place? Are there any praisers in this place? On behalf of our spiritual mom, Lady Nisha and Apostle Ryan, welcome to Glory Divine, a place to call home. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. And to our online viewers, you are welcome to glorify the Lord with us. Amen. So I believe we're going to dance and clap our hands for the glory of the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Are you ready to glorify the Lord? Amen. Come on, somebody. Are you ready to praise the Lord? Amen. Amen. I'm gonna Hallelujah. Welcome. We are on fire for the Lord. Hallelujah. Is anybody here that's on fire for the Lord? Let me see your hands. Glory divine is a church on fire. Hallelujah. Let's praise him. Church, put your hands together. Come on. The Holy Spirit is here and His power is real. Anything can happen and it probably will. Something very good. Something good is going on around Come on, worship team. There is a light that shines to make the dark disappear. Power at work, but there's nothing to fear. Something very good. Hallelujah, sing. This is a church on fire. This is a holy spirit. Jesus name. Yeah. Let the fire burn in every heart. Light the way to feed the dark. Church. This is a church of fire. Come on to the top. The Holy Spirit is here and His power is real. Anything can happen and it probably will. Something very good, cool, something good is going on around me. There is a light, there is a light that shines to make the dark disappear. Power at work, but there's nothing to fear. Something very good, cool, something good is going on. Can we say this is a church on fire? This is a church. We have a burning desire to lift up Jesus name. And the fire burn, let fire burn in every heart This is the church This is the church of fire 
This is the church on. This is the church on fire. Church on fire, hallelujah. Amen. This is a church on fire. This is a we have a burning desire. Church on fire. This is a church on fire. This is a holy spirit. We have a burning desire. Let fire burn in every heart. Light the way to the dark. This is a church. Let fire burn. One more time. This is the church. This is the church on fire. Let fire burn. Fire burn in every heart. Light the way to the dark. Let the flame of our fire. This is the church. This is the church on fire. Come on, put your hands together. Amen. Hallelujah. We are a church on fire. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. The next song says, This kind God. I've never seen the God like he, the one we have. Hallelujah. Hallelujah is a bigger God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So we're going to praise Him like we understand that our God is big. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Come on, somebody, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. This kind of God, I've never seen your type of. Say, this kind of God. Blessed be your holy name. To this kind God, oh, I've never seen your type of. To this kind God, oh, blessed be your holy name. Can I say one more time? To this kind God, oh, I've never seen your type of. To this kind God. Oh, Blessed be your holy name. I say, this kind God, oh, I've never seen your type of. This kind God, oh, blessed be your holy name. This kind God, oh, this kind God, hey, this kind God, I've never seen your type, never seen your type, Papa. In your time, Papa. Say blessed. Hey, this kind of God, this kind of God. Hey, this kind of God, I never seen you. Never seen you time, Papa. Hey, blessed. Hey, this kind of God, this kind of God. Hey, this kind of God, I never seen you. Never 
was in your time, Papa. Listen. Listen. I say two for seven. I praise you, Jehovah. I say two for seven. I praise you, Papa. Say two for seven. I praise you, Jehovah. Say two for seven. I praise you, Papa. Two for seven. Hey, two for seven. Praise you, Jehovah. Two for seven. Say blessed. I praise you, Papa. Two for seven. Two for seven. Two for seven. I praise you, Jehovah. Praise you, Papa. Two for seven. I praise, I praise you, Papa. Let me ask you, say, who has a final say? Jehovah has a final say. Hey, who has a final say? Jehovah. Hey, who has a final say? Hey, who has a final say? Jehovah, hey, Jehovah, turn my life around. Jehovah, turn my life around. He makes a way. He makes a way. He makes a way. Turn my life around. Jehovah, turn my life around. He makes a way. Jehovah, he makes a way. He makes a way when there seems no way. Jehovah, one more time, say he makes he makes a way when there seems no way. Jehovah, it's a time I see. Come on, close those hands for the Lord. Come on, let's give God all the glory. Hallelujah. Tambira Jehovah. Jehovah, Tambira Jehovah, Tambira. Yeshua Kanaka, 
Thank you, Brother Cabello. Greetings to you, church, in the name of Jesus. Amen. A special greeting to my mom and dad, Apostle Ryan, First Lady Nisha, for this opportunity, as well as a greeting to our online viewers this morning. My message this morning is titled, Devote Yourself to Serve in God's House. Amen. My scripture reading is taken from the book of 1 Samuel, chapter 17, and verse 17. And it reads as follows. Then Jesse said to his son David, Take now to your brothers this epa of dried grain and these ten loaves and run to your brother's camp. And carry these ten cheeses to the captain of the thousands and see how your brothers fare and bring back the news of them. Amen. Now, Jesse was the son, was the grandson of Ruth in the book of Ruth, chapter 14 and verse 17. Amen? He did, Ruth herself did not abandon her mother-in-law, Naomi. During the tragedy, they both suffered losing their husband. But she stayed with her. Amen? Now, in the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 6, verse 1 to 5, Moses teaches the children of Israel, about wholehearted commitment to the Lord. Do you believe it's important to learn about commitment? Yeah. Amen. Now, in the book of Matthew, in the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 6, verse 6 and 7, he teaches the children of Israel how they must do this. Amen? And it says, you must commit wholeheartedly to these commands that I'm giving you today. Repeat them again and again to your children. Talk about them when you are at home, when you are on the road, when you go to bed, and when you get up. Amen? Now, you and I are here in Glory Divine World Ministry. Amen? The year is 2022. The year of divine manifestations. Amen? Now, in order for the manifestation, for the divine manifestation to happen to each and every one of us, this is what we need to do. We need to serve the Lord wholeheartedly. Amen? We need to work in this house. Not another house. This house. Lord of Divine World Ministries. Amen? And we need to teach those in our households to do the same. To serve the Lord with diligence and wholeheartedness. Amen? Let us pray for the tithes and offering. Father, we come before you, Lord, through no other name but the name of Jesus. We give you praise, my God. We give you glory, honor, and adoration. We thank you for each and every child of yours, O oh Father, that has heeded unto your instruction, O oh Father God. 
For you said in your word, given it shall be given, a double measure, praise and shake to the gathering over. Spirit of the living God, we thank you for those who are going to give into your house for the extension of the kingdom. We thank you, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. You can come forward and give unto the Lord. Amen. And after giving, you can stand and join us as we continue to sing. Amen. Tell me, what can I do? I can live without you. I can live without you. Tell me, what can I do? I can live without you. I can live without you. Tell me, what can I do? I can live without you. I can live without you. Here's my heart. Take my mind. I give you my soul, Lord. I want you to take control. Cause I try it all. I try it on my own. What I found it. I can make it on my own. On my own.
On my own, Lord, I cannot make it. On my own, on my own, on my own. life, God, I cannot make it, Lord, I cannot make it, without you, Jesus, without you, my God, I cannot make it, Lord, I cannot make it, without you, God, without you, Jesus, I cannot make it, I cannot Let's give God all the praise. Amen. Without Him, we are nothing. Hallelujah. Amen. Without Jesus, we cannot make it. Hallelujah. Amen. You may take your seats in His presence. Before I take testimonies, are there any new people in our midst? Can you stand so that we can welcome you? Amen. Praise the Lord. We all family. Amen. I'm going to hand over to Elder Dale. Amen. Hallelujah. I greet you all in the wonderful name of Jesus. A special greeting to our mom and dad as well as a thank you. Are you blessed to be found in the presence of the Lord? Amen. Just one quick announcement, Church of God, from the Glory Divine Kingdom Kids. That's our Sunday school. Hallelujah. Now, the teachers have requested that the parents come and collect an invitation and an indemnity form for the Kingdom Kids Sunday school treat. Hallelujah. Amen. So the teachers requested that you come and collect an indemnity form and an invitation at the hall where the teachers will be waiting for you after the service. Amen. Let your children go. Let them enjoy the Sunday school treat. Let them not feel left out. So go and collect that form and the invitation after the service. God bless you. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Elder Dave. We're going to take two, three sweet testimonies short. Amen. To the point. Amen. You're welcome, my sister. Amen. Good morning, my brothers and sisters in Christ. Um, I've got just a short testimony. I've got my late sister's grandchildren. Um, I've got two of them, actually three. But the one is currently, um, his uh, eighth patient is only seven years old. His mom also passed on. So dad prayed for the little one uh, in somewhere in June, July. And then the auntie, and that's another story, they came to fetch him again. But then the... Um, the social workers asked me in September to take him back. So I took him back and he had an AIDS count, I don't know what, what you call that count, but it was very high. And I remember that God prayed for him in June and July. So in September, I, September I've asked him, to, I mean October I asked him to take another blood test. I went on the 10th, I went, I went back on the 10th of November for the blood test. The count is now from some 600 and something to L LDL, and they say it's lower than detected. So I can just give God the honor, the glory, and the praise. If it wasn't for death and the praise, it would never happen. Thank you. Praise the Lord. We'll be the second person to give God praise. Amen. Hallelujah, somebody. I know that testimony is in our midst. Remember, your testimony will bless somebody else. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm waiting. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Yes. Anybody, somebody? Amen. Yes. Amen. Greetings to the church. Um, I would like to give this encouragement to 
uh, did testimony to encourage everybody. The wisdom that the Holy Spirit has given unto us and the boldness. Thursday, myself and the other day, we went to visit um, another sister. We didn't know the situation that the sister was going through. Not knowing that her daughter at the age of 25 years had died. And she said that she's angry with God. We went there and in, we found ourselves in such situation where the Holy Spirit gave us wisdom and boldness. We encouraged the sister and finally we were able to let the, lead the sister into God and she accepted Jesus Christ. So I would like to say that Paul says that pray without ceasing. So in your spirit, you must always pray to God. And we gave the sister that also number that she has to contact that. Amen. Amen, you are welcome. Morning. My name is uh, Vera. Uh, this morning, I just want to greet and I want to thank the Lord for standing here in front of you. Uh, two years ago, my husband was diagnosed with pancreas cancer. I prayed diligently. Excuse my speech, because you will hear why I am talking like this. Um, <clears throat> I prayed. And I just thank the Lord today because the doctor says that this is a severe form of cancer. But today he is healed. And I can <clears throat> I prayed and I said every day I thank the Lord. Here I'm standing today with brain cancer. This is my third week of uh, radiation. Everybody is asking me, are you not sick? Are you not feeling? I said, no. I have the Lord because the Lord is with me. And yeah. every day I thank the Lord and I know my Lord will heal me. Good morning, church. Um, thank you, Bishop. Thank you, Lady Nish, for this opportunity to share about the goodness of the Lord. Amen. In last year, June, my husband passed away. Amen. And uh, it was very, very difficult for me. But I just know for a fact that Bishop was praying for me, always in his prayers. Amen. There was days when Bishop sent me a message. I never asked him to pray. But then he will send me a message and say, Sister, I'm praying for you. Then I say to my daughter, but I never asked Bishop. I never told him anything. But then uh, that's why I know that his heart is so close to God that he can hear when God said something to him. Amen. And um, uh, I had a problem with my husband's estate because his, his will was what F, what FNB. FNB never wanted to release the world to the masters. And I was up and down, up and down. But I never feared anything because I know the man of God is praying for me. Amen. And in March, the, the FNB released the world to the masters. And they sent me an email. I went to the masters. The, the world was there. They said to me, the estate is too big. They can't, uh, I, 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 they can't help me. I must get my own lawyer. And uh, I got my own lawyer in March. And when I uh, went to my lawyer, everything, I, I, I sent Bishop a message. And, I, and, and the lawyer says to me, but in January, in February, Bishop prophesied here, he says, in, 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 before December, somebody's going to have his own title deed in his hands. And I took that word, I knew in my heart that was my word. And I went to the lawyer in March, and the lawyer says to me, this estate is so big, it's going to take one year and six months. I said, no. The man of God says before December. She said, but can you hear what am I saying? I said, no. The man of God said before December. 
And that was March when she started working. And I paid her all her monies and everything. It was some difficulties, but I know Bishop prayed for me. And on the 14th of October, I received the email, the house and everything is on my name. I must come and fetch my title deeds and all the papers of my husband, places that I must still go to for my husband's money and everything. And on Monday, I went to the lawyer. I said, remember what you said? You said it's going to take uh, one year and six months. I told you, the man of God says, before December. And she says, yeah, you praying people. I said, yes, we are praying. And uh, I, on Monday, I came home with all my papers and my title deed. And I give God all the praises. Because I took the word that Bishop said before December. And I said, that is my word. And I kept it in my heart. Amen. Thank you. Hallelujah. The Bible says, believe his words, you, you shall be established. And believe his prophets, and you shall prosper. Hallelujah. So we have the prophet of God in our midst. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Let's stand in the presence of the Lord. We want to give all praises unto our God. Amen. David says, I'll bless the Lord at all times. And his praises shall continually be on my lips. All times means, even if the weather is bad, but I'll still bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Even if things are not going my way, but I'll still leave the name of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Whether in good times or in bad times, but we need to leave the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Let's lift our hands as we surrender unto God. As we lift our voices unto the Lord. For He's worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. Lord, we praise your name. Lift your voice to the Lord and say, You are God of more than enough, for we know your name is Ashadai. Come on, lift your voice and say, You are God of The God of more enough, say, You are God of more than enough. For we know your name is Ashadai. We are going higher.
and we give you honor. You are in us, O oh God, and we are in you, my God. We are more than conquerors in you. We are more than overcomers in you. We have victory in you, O oh God. We have healing. We have deliverance. We have breakthrough. We have favor. We have mercy. We have grace. We have goodness. Lord, we thank you, O oh God, that we are in you. And your word says, if we are in you, ask to the Father anything in your name. And you will grant us, O oh God, the desires of our heart. O oh God, we have victory. We are healed. We are delivered. We are set free. Every chain and every bondage and every shackles is broken, O oh God. Oh Lord, we are seated in high places. Lord, we are overcomers, oh God. We thank you that we are prosperous. No good things shall be withheld from us, oh God. Lord, though we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, we shall come out on the other side victorious. Father, we thank you that no storms shall blow us. No troubles shall conquer us. No problems shall defeat us. No enemies shall overcome us. Lord, we are rising. We are not quitters. We are winners, O oh God. We are more than conquerors through you because you loved us, O oh God. You died for us. You have given us victory. Lord, we thank you. Lord Jesus, that whatever we are going through, Lord, we will rise over it. 
no obstacle shall defeat us. Uh, no opposition shall conquer us. Uh, no sickness, oh God, shall overcome us. Uh, we are a royal priesthood. We are a chosen generation. Uh, we are the victorious ones. Uh, we rise up uh, and we shout victory. We blow the trumpet uh, with a loud shout and say that we have overcome. Uh, we have overcome in Christ uh, and nothing shall defeat us. Uh, we thank you, Jesus, uh, for your Holy Spirit. Uh, we thank you for your blood. Uh, we thank Thank you for your word. We thank you for angels. We are not alone. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. We shall cross over the Jordan. We shall cross over the Red Sea. We shall come out, O oh God, rejoicing in our heart. Lord, if you be for us, who can be against us? Shall trials, shall tribulation, shall testing, shall peril, shall hardship, shall storms, nothing shall destroy us. We shall rise and be above. I said we shall rise and be above. A new season shall be birthed. Our story shall change. We shall come out. The door shall open up. We shall receive our healing. It's our time. It's our season. The delay is over. The stoppages is gone. The blockages is gone. There is a breakthrough. There is a sound of abundance of rain. It's our season. The clouds are clearing and the sun is shining and we shall receive the goodness of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Can we give the Lord a hand clap? Hallelujah. Can we shout victory? Can we shout victory in the name of Jesus? Glory, 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 glory. Amen and amen. Father, we thank you for your awesome presence in this place. For your presence in the house of those that are watching online. For your glory, for your anointing that destroys yoke. I pray every ear attentive, every heart receptive of God, that no words will be stolen by the devourer. Every word will take root and grow and bear much fruit unto repentance, unto salvation, unto deliverance, unto prosperity, O God. I commit myself as I minister your word. Speak through me, O God. Let your word be light and life. Power, O God. Words of conviction, words of enlightenment, uh, words of instruction, O oh God, words of, of, of encouragement, Father, in the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, we invite you. The blood of Jesus is on this place, in this place, upon you, online also, upon all of us, in the mighty name of Jesus, as liberty. I declare, I prophesy, there's liberty in this place. There's freedom in this place. In the mighty name of Jesus. Glory to God. Let's praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And you may be seated. Amen and amen. Let's give the praise and worship team a hand, the leadership, and give yourself a hand in the presence of God. Are you blessed? I see the rain kept some people away. Hallelujah. Wherever they are, I pray the blessings of the Lord be upon them. In the mighty name of Jesus. But give yourself your hand, a hand to be in the presence of God. Say, Lord, speak to me. In the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. God is doing great things in the life of his children. Amen. You know, this is a place where the testimony never stops. And if you have a testimony and if you are seated, uh, don't rob God of glory. Never rob God of glory. Hallelujah. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. I remember when Sister Maria brought that child with, with AIDS. Hallelujah. Amen. And uh, now there's a report. Amen. Glory to God. Our God is an awesome God. Amen. Our sister testified of cancer, husband cancer healed. Glory to God. I remember Sister Loma. So many times, you know, we communicated and I told her, no, God will come through for you. Amen. The title deed will be in your hand. Amen. Nothing is impossible. December is not over yet. I said December is not over yet. Hallelujah. Some of you will still testify about the 
title deeds in your hand and the car papers in your hand. Uh, hallelujah. In the mighty name of Jesus. Glory to God. Pray for me because I want to sell my Elantra. Amen. For eight years from brand new, I'm driving that. So I want to sell that and get something else to run around daily. In the mighty name of Jesus. Glory to God. Eight years of faithful service. Hallelujah. Amen. It's a good car. Amen. I want to get on with the word of God, divine restoration. The theme is still divine restoration. And I want to talk to you this morning on the result of divine positioning, part three. The result of divine positioning, part three. The Bible says in Joel 2 verse 25, And I will restore to you the years that the locust have eaten, and the canker worm and the caterpillar and the palmer worm, my great army which I sent among you. I just want to recap hallelujah for you as a foundation and then I'm going to get into the word that the Lord has laid in my heart. So God is promising in this verse that he will restore the children of Israel. He will restore us. The word restore is the word shalom. Hallelujah. Amen. Shalom means completeness. It means peace. It means healing. It means restoration retribution repayment hallelujah so the bible says he will restore the years that these insects have destroyed amen also in a literal sense god will restore all the land back to the children of god hallelujah god will restore the peace of his children the joy of his children the prosperity of his children how many of you know that our god is a loving father Hallelujah. He only has good things in store for you. The devil has bad things in store for you. So if you're going through bad things in life, it is not God. Hallelujah. So our October theme was divine restoration. So let's continue with this theme. Last two weeks, Sunday, we learned that it's important to move from being a visitor. Amen. To be a congregant from being a congregation to become a son and a daughter in the ministry today i'll teach you a little bit about covenant hallelujah amen so become a son and become a daughter in the ministry amen when when you become a son and a daughter in the ministry you become ministry partners uh, amen they become ladder holders for the visionary amen or the apostle they become one strong family united together moving capturing the, the kingdom of God from the kingdom of darkness. Uh, they protect, pray for, and guard the church. Uh, hallelujah. The burden of the ministry become their burden. Uh, they become effective and productive in growing the ministry. They don't partake in gossip and become instruments. Uh, hallelujah. But they build unity in the body of Christ. When the church is hurt, they feel hurt. When the church is burdened, they feel burdened. When they go to another place and somebody is talking about glory divine, you put a stop right there in there and you say, if you want to gossip about the church, I am no part of it. If you want me to go I will go because this is your home this is your family this is the body of Christ and no body is perfect hallelujah if you look at your body right now there must be some way something is paining or some way something is lacking so your body is never complete and that is how the church body is but we need to hold the body together we need to build the body together sons and daughters don't take offense and leave the church for petty reason. They stay and they resolve the problem. Hallelujah. Elisha had a sonship spirit with his spiritual father, Elisha. Elisha received a double portion of anointing when Elisha went into glory. The anointing upon the life of Elisha did not just come through following. He had a servant's heart. He served. He was a son to Elisha. He kept Elisha in sight. He was a faithful, obedient follower. He was a submissive son to the father he was a steward and he had the spirit of sonship hallelujah and if you really want to receive from the local government of God which is the local government of God is the church which he has instituted if you really want to receive what comes
comes from the pulpit and from the structure of the church. You've got to become a son. You've got to become a daughter. You've got to have a covenant relationship. Hallelujah. With the ecclesia, the local ecclesia, which is the church. Hallelujah. So Elisha passed the obedience test before he was positioned to become one of the greatest prophet. If he was not obedient, if he was not a follower, if he did not tap into the anointing and grace of his father, he would have just been an ordinary person. And there are ordinary people in the church because the Bible says in the book of Ephesians that your mind has been darkened because you have not accepted the truth. If you accept the truth, you shall be set free and you shall be eating from the table that God has prepared for you and no stoppages and blockages can stop you if you are in a covenant relationship hallelujah under the authority and the structure that God has ordained hallelujah am I talking to you in the mighty name. Your door is not opening for a job. You can't get a good husband. You can't get a good wife. You can't get healed. Look at your alignment with God. Hallelujah. So the first test that Elisha, hallelujah, faced was the test of going to Gilgal. Second Kings chapter 2 verse 1 and 2. My reading is taken from the New King James Version. And it came to pass when the Lord was about to take up Elijah into heaven by a whirlwind. That Elijah went with Elisha from Gilgal. Then Elijah said to Elisha, stay here please. For the Lord has sent me on to Bethel. But Elisha said, as the Lord lives and as your soul lives, I will not leave you. That's covenant. That's religion relationship that's honor so they went down to Bethel hallelujah glory to God glory to God glory to God tell your neighbor you got to be divinely positioned to receive divine resources hallelujah divinely positioned divinely positioned hallelujah glory to God one of the meanings of the word Gilgal is circle hallelujah Elijah followed Elijah and stopped his life from just moving in circles he passed the obedience test there are so many people here seated here those that are online millions around the world their life is in circles they are going through a cyclical pattern because they are not prepared to go straight forward and pass the obedience test and receive the instruction from God and the man of God and follow through so that you can receive from the resources of God and stop your life from bring or going through circles and every three years you come back to the point where you have started this morning I declare and I prophesy the pattern of cyclical patterns be broken in your life that God will speak to you right now that you will submit to the Holy Spirit and you will receive instruction from God and you will surrender your heart to God and say unto God that today is the day that I give eviction to everything that derails me everything that takes me on a detour I'm going into the road of purpose my provision is found in the road of purpose I'm making my mind up and nothing shall shake me anymore I will be divinely positioned the decision is yours my brother my sister Amen. It's not God's. God has given you everything. Hallelujah. He's given you love. He's given you his son. He's given you his word. He's given you the Holy Spirit. He's given you everything that you need. He's given you a church. He's given you a pastor. He's given you the word. He's given you. It's your decision. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. The second test. Before Elisha became the greatest prophet, hallelujah, the second test. Before you walk in your full assignment, the second test. Before you get the resources of God, the second test. Before you get healed, the second test. Before the door opens, the second test. Hallelujah. And the second test was battle. Genesis 28 verse 16 to 17. Those that are online. Leicester Moy. 
Genesis 28, 16 to 17. Then Jacob awoke from his sleep and said, Surely the Lord is in this place. And I did not know it. And he was afraid and said, How awesome this place. This is none other than the house of God. And this is the gate of heaven. Bethel means the house of God. So he passed the spiritual test. The second test was the spiritual test. Testing his priorities, Brother Indran. Testing his priorities. Hallelujah. Will he go with his master? Will he go with his father? Will he go with his mentor? Even if his mentor says, Go, stay, don't come with me. Will he go to the house of God? Will he go? Will he get his priorities right? Hallelujah. And here we see Elisha pass the test. And he says, I will never leave you. I will not leave you. I will go where you go. Hallelujah. The third test and today's message is Jericho. Getting over your opposition. Hallelujah. Jericho represents opposition. Hallelujah. Amen. You cannot get over your opposition without going to Bethel. You didn't get me. Some of you are sleeping. Hallelujah. Ye slap. In the kerk. Hallelujah. I mean, why did the second test was the house of God, not Jericho? Hallelujah. God will never throw opposition your way without giving you the instruction to get into the house of God and prepare yourself. Hallelujah. So he went to battle the house of God and now he was prepared, hallelujah, to take on any opposition. Come, devil, hallelujah, give me your best daughter and I'll still be standing, hallelujah, because my priorities is right. Glory to God. So the third test, Jericho, getting over your opposition. Second Kings chapter 2 verse 4. Then Elijah said to him, Elisha, stay here, please. For the Lord has sent me on to Jericho. But he said, as the Lord lives and as your soul lives, I will never leave you. So they came to Jericho. When I think of Jericho, I am always reminded of the walls that had to be shouted down. Just as Elisha approached his test at Jericho, so will we be tested. Everyone that is seated here under the sound of my voice, Brother Denny, every person will be tested. Hallelujah. Oh, you got a choice whether the test can defeat you or you will defeat the test in the name of Jesus. If you are prepared and found in Bethel, the house of God. Hallelujah. Whether it's rain, whether it's tsunami, whether it's whatever pouring, the house of God is your priority. Tomorrow morning it's going to be raining, it's going to be pouring, but you will wake up and report to your boss. But what about your boss's boss in the house of God? Where is your priority? In the mighty name of Jesus. So Joshua chapter 6 verse 10, and I'm reading all from the New King James Version. Joshua 6 verse 10 the Bible says now Joshua had commanded the people saying you shall not shout or make any noise with your voice nor shall a word proceed out of your mouth until the day I say to you shout that you shall shout some of you are shouting too quick hallelujah some of you are not in the house of God and you're shouting outside that is why your shout is only lasting seven days Hallelujah. If you listen to the instruction of God and if you are found in the house of God and the blood of Jesus is protecting you, angels are, hallelujah, ushering you, the Holy Spirit's presence is endorsing you, you will shout and you will shout louder the next week. Hallelujah. Nobody will be able to silence your shout as long as you are in the presence of God. Glory to God. A test of submission. Submit under the leader Joshua, hallelujah. The scripture that I read, Joshua said, hallelujah, blaze still, mark your mourn too. Don't speak, don't say anything. March around the city wall six times, hallelujah. 
a test of submission. Sometimes a leader corrects you or somebody corrects you, you have an attitude. Hallelujah. Amen. Friendships are broken not because of things, it's broken because of attitude, because of arrogancy. Your relationship with God and from your house of God, house of God is broken because of your attitude, because of your arrogancy, because of your heart condition. And I pray this morning that God sweeps your heart, does a spring cleaning, that you will not be shifted from your destiny lane, that everything that pertains to your life shall come to you in the mighty name of Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. A test of trusting and obeying the leader. Follow a confusing instruction. March. No gossip. No talking. Hallelujah. A test of endurance. Seven times. How many of you can pass the test of submission? How, can you, how many of you can pass the test of of, 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 of receiving an instruction if the instruction don't make sense but you trust the leader you trust your spiritual father that he's listening from God and you honor the instruction hallelujah without questioning and going to your neighbor outside and discussing him in the car and discussing him in your house hallelujah and after three months you come to know the apostle was right because he heard from God hallelujah in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Remember, when you talk about a man of God, you bring a curse upon yourself. In the mighty name of Jesus. Glory to God. And I pray that God forgives any person that has indulged in those things. So your door can be open. That you can go into your new season freely. In the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. A test of endurance. How many of you start something but never finish it? Hallelujah. You make a commitment and four times you keep it. But then the fourth time you give up. But yeah, there's an instruction seven times you must march. Hallelujah. And it's, 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 it's a test of endurance. It's a test of consistency. It's a test of integrity. It's a test of faithfulness. Hallelujah. It's a test of patience. In the mighty name of Jesus. God will never put you into anything. Hallelujah. To destroy you. God will never allow anything to come your way. To cripple you. Everything comes your way. To strengthen and to mature you. So that you can receive his best for your life. In the mighty. So say God give me wisdom to understand my situation. Hallelujah. Some of you may be in a honeymoon right now. You walked away from the calling of God. You're in a honeymoon, but God is still speaking to you. Before the wind blows, before the storm comes your way, before destruction comes, make right and get back to your calling and get back to what God has assigned for your life. In the mighty. Yes, your honeymoon might last three days. You'll get a promotion. You'll get this. You'll buy a new car. You'll buy a new house. You'll do this, do that. The devil allows that. Hallelujah. But when he comes to collect, God will move his hands. Hallelujah. Because God's grace sometimes stretches for five years. Sometimes for six years, he gives you grace to come back to the altar where you left. Hallelujah. And I pray this morning that God is speaking to you in the mighty name of Jesus. It's only God's way and no man's way. If you want to prosper, if you want God's best in your life, it's God's way. Hallelujah. I wish I can stand here behind the pulpit and just hype you and make you happy and go out and live a defeated life. No, I stand here as the mouthpiece of God. Hallelujah. If you come to glory divine, you are here to hear the heart of God, the heartbeat of God, the voice of God, the plan of God, the will of God, the assignment of God that will make you a man and a woman, that will make you a history maker. Hallelujah. That will make you somebody that people look up to you and say that man and that woman is a woman of God and a man of God. Hallelujah. Amen. A test of endurance. If you cannot pass the test of submission, you will be like a time bomb waiting to, be exp waiting to explode. You will be gifted but not usable. You know how many people are gifted today? Gifted musicians are in bars. Gifted musicians, you cannot even teach them. You know, you, there's so many gifted musicians came here in this church. Gifted, gifted, gifted. I've never given them a place up here. Hallelujah. Because the Bible says, no, you shall not be known by your gift but by your character. 
by your fruit. Because I don't want a gifted musician to come and upset the team here, upset the team here. There will be division in the team because the person has got pride and arrogancy because I'm gifted. Oh, nobody can tell me what to do. I'll tell you what to do. Hambakaya. Hambalala. You can't come into the house of God, hallelujah, and have pride. You must come with humbleness. With humility, you must be able to be part of the team. Let a spirit of unity flow from the top because you, the spirit of unity will bless the congregation. Hallelujah. You are gifted but no character in the mighty name of When I'm looking for, I'm going to be ordaining pastors. I'm not going to be looking for gift. I'll be looking for character. People that when the church is gone, they still work behind the scene to see to the house of God. Hallelujah. Not when you just hear, you clock your card and you're gone. I never see you until Sunday again. Hallelujah. I want people that loves people. I want people that loves the house of God. I want people, hallelujah. Why do you want to be a pastor if you don't love people and if you cannot take care of his kingdom? Why do you want a title? Hallelujah. No, no title here. Hallelujah. God will tell me who to ordain and who to ordain that this, this kingdom here, yeah, God's kingdom, then can move and become stronger and stronger and stronger. So when somebody stands here, the blessings of the Lord must pour upon you in the mighty name of Jesus. I don't have to follow what the other churches are doing. Amen. I don't have to get disco lights here to fill the church. I don't have to do this. I don't have to entertain you. The word of God I have to preach. And that is what you need, hallelujah, to sustain you. That is what you need, hallelujah, to set you free. For your home to be set free in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. So, we need to be obedient and complete our assignment before we can move to the next place. Sometimes the assignment will make no sense. Hallelujah. The assignment, like brother, uh, what you call, Samuel saying that I, I asked brother Dale to take him and go. The brother Dale is instructed to do visitation and, brother, and elder Byron is instructed to do a visitation. I don't know which house they went and somebody died. Hallelujah. And they were depressed. I'm not God. You gotta phone me. You gotta let me know. I've got thousands and thousands of people to take care of. You might think you are the most important person, but there's hundreds of people I'm dealing on a daily basis. I'm not God. Hallelujah. So that person is at fault. Not the church, not the pastor. Hallelujah. In the mighty name. You should notify me. And one person here can ever wake up and say, if you notified me, and if I didn't come back to you. In the mighty name of Jesus. And sometimes people that are sitting at home, they say the church don't visit me or church don't do me. Hallelujah. Amen. The house of God is open. The telephone line is open. The WhatsApp line is open. Hallelujah. The elders are here. There's a whole lot of people. Send us a message please. In the mighty name of Jesus. Don't get angry and leave the church. Hallelujah. Assuming somebody knows something of your situation. Hallelujah. I don't want to get into what assume means if you divide it into three. <laughs> I shouldn't be telling that from the pulpit. Hallelujah. In the mighty name of Jesus. So Joshua chapter 6 verse 1, the Bible say, Now Jericho was securely shut up because of the children of Israel. None went out and none came in. Listen to this. Hallelujah. The walls of Jericho. That city was shut up. Hallelujah. Amen. None went out and none came in. Hallelujah. When we look at Jericho, nothing could go into it and nothing could come out. The city was so fortified that the Bible says five chariots could go, drive on the city wall, on the fence. That's how thick it was. That's how thick the wall was. Hallelujah. I'm telling you some of your problems and the walls that you are facing is too thick. For human can, cannot solve it. Hallelujah. What does it do? It keeps the blessings out. 
Hallelujah. In the mighty name of Jesus. And that is why you can't penetrate through. And the city wall is like a gate and a door. Hallelujah. Holding your blessing. So Joshua in order to defeat the city. Hallelujah. Amen. He knew that he had men of war. Listen to me. Now I'm getting to the meat of this message. He said he, he knew he has men of war. But he said for this problem. For this city I don't need men of war. I need priests. There are certain things in your life you are facing. Men of war and phone a friend. And your neighbor and talking to your wife or husband will not solve it. You need a covenant relationship with your man of God. Clearly Joshua said hallelujah. I don't need men of war. I need priests. Hallelujah. Amen. Needed a divine positioning. A divine positioning was needed. I tell your neighbor divine positioning is needed. Hallelujah. Divine positioning. There's so many people that are going through trouble, problems, uh, and, and, and your door is not opening. Uh, things are happening in your life. Cyclical things. Hallelujah. Because you are not divinely positioned under the authority, the grace, the anointing. Hallelujah. The structure, the ecclesia, the local government that God has created. There's no alignment uh, and there's no covenant. Uh, that is why that stoppage and that wall cannot break open. You got to understand that. Holy Spirit, help me to preach this in the mighty name of Jesus. You got to listen. You got to listen and understand. You can't be that mojo type of a person and say, I can do it on my own. Hallelujah. You'll suffer. Spiritual things you cannot just penetrate without a covenant relationship. Hallelujah. Amen. The priest and the ark was needed to be positioned in its rightful place. Joshua gave an instruction. Put the priest there. Then let the ark be there. Let the ark be there. Then the priest. Divine positioning before this wall can come down. Because you can get all your armies. You can get all your swords. They cannot bring this wall down. You got to have the right positioning in place. And the supernatural will bring the wall down. And that is why Elisha said to Elisha. I, I'm not going to stay back. I'm going to go with you because I want to know what is happening. I want to fight your fight. I want to overcome oppositions with you. I want to face Jericho and what you face, I'll face with you. I'll battle with you. I'll be in your back. I'll hold your hands and I'll never let go. I am with you all the way. Never give up and elope and humble. Balega, Hadloop, when the times get tough. Hallelujah. So God said to Joshua, the men of war will not stand a chance against this wall of Jericho. It will not stand a chance. Many of you, and don't get me wrong, yeah, wisdom is speaking. Many of you got relationship with too many pastors and too many Facebook preachers. Hallelujah. You don't know who you're accepting prayers from. Everybody that called themselves an apostle on Facebook, hallelujah, is not an apostle. How can you be an apostle of Facebook? <laughs> many of you are allowing yourself into chains and bondage because of your relationship sister Loretta brother Kenneth with the wrong people with the wrong people that are saved from the pulpit in the name of Jesus and being aligned with the wrong people because you have been aligned for 30 years and 25 years doesn't make it okay that they're speaking the mouth of God and the voice of God Let your alignment be a Holy Spirit decision. Pray about it. Pray about it. 
pray about it until God gives you that assurance that this is your mentor, this is your father, this is your alignment, and this is the person you're going to have a covenant relationship that the walls of Jericho in your life will fall when you get into a covenant relationship with this person. Some people, the things get worse in your life. You ask me to pray. And I pray with faith. I give my heart out uh, towards you. And I pray with you. Next thing I hear, you're phoning another pastor. And you're phoning another person and praying. That's unbelief. You're canceling that prayer. I'm speaking it to you online right now. You're like a doubting person. You just cancel the prayer that apostle prayed. Because if you take me as a man of God... I'm running the church for 21 years. I'm in ministry for 30 years. And you know my prayer works. When I pray to God, God answers. You don't ask me to pray for you. Lay hands on you. Stand on the gap with you. And when I put the phone down, next thing you're phoning another person. And then that's doubt. You're canceling the prayer that I prayed. And then later you'll say, Pastor, Apostle, the prayer never held. I'm still sick. It's doubt that made you sick. Listen to the word of God. Jesus prayed. People got healed. Hallelujah. When Jesus was walking the earth, he walked like a man and he prayed. When people asked him to pray, they accepted his prayer. They didn't go around and say, Barnabas, pray for me more. Oh, oh Apostle Paul, pray for me more. Oh, Timothy, pray. When they, Jesus prayed, they accepted the prayer and they got healed because if they did that, it was unbelief. I'm not talking about corporate prayer. I'm not talking about intercession prayer. There's a need in the church, we tell the intercessory team to pray. 100 people pray, 20 people pray, 15 people pray. But if you come to me with a special request, and Matthew 18, 19, 2 agree, I agree with you, it's a covenant. Don't break that covenant through doubt and go again and say, oh, prophet, you came into the tower and prophesy, pray for me. I'm teaching you wisdom, biblical divine wisdom in the mighty name of Jesus. Tomorrow you are sick if I pray for you. You thank God, say my man of God prayed, I'm healed. After five days you're still sick. You take the word of God because it's not my word, it's God's word. I am just a servant. I'm just a delivery boy of delivering his message. And I'm agreeing with you. And the grace over my life will come upon you. The anointing will pull you out of sickness. And you will walk in healing. If somebody don't get healed when I pray. It's not God's fault. It's not my fault. It's the way you received that prayer. In the name of Jesus. It looks like I'm going to preach on Jericho next week. Hallelujah. We're still going to Jericho. Sometimes the Holy Spirit just diverts us to give you some cherry on the top. Hallelujah. So, so here we see, he said, God said to Jericho, bring the ark of the covenant, ark of the covenant, surround the city and keep moving around it with the priest and the ark. Hallelujah. Don't talk for six days. Gather the priests, those appointed as God's representatives. Hallelujah. And the ark is a symbol of the strength and presence of God. Hallelujah. Gather the priest. Gather the representative of God. Gather the pastor. Hallelujah. That has been assigned with you. Remember, that has been assigned with you. That has been assigned with you. Don't go from that country and that country and that country. Any, mini, miny, more. You come here, you come here. You know. Gather the priest that has been assigned, tried and tested with you. Let them go. Hallelujah. Let the ark go and let the priest go. Hallelujah. Let it be a divine positioning and you just march. Chup, still. No talk, no gossip, no nothing. You just march behind the priest. Hallelujah. One time, two times. Time, three times, four times, five times, six times, and on the seven day march, seven times, and then shout, shout, and blow the trumpet. Don't shout beforehand. 
Don't blow your trumpet beforehand. You know how many people blow their trumpet beforehand? And they are not even gone to Bethel, the house of God, and prepared. They are not divinely positioned. The priest is not there. The presence of God is not in order. And they're blowing the trumpet. That's why the last minute you don't get the job. That's why your business fails. That's why that man you thought is going to marry you runs away, Balega. Because you're blowing your trumpet beforehand. You're supposed to be chup still. You should have been waited until God says, now testify. Hallelujah. And you don't do the job. If the people were talking and strategizing, then for six days and seven days, uh, the people could have said, we did it. God says, Munikaras Makni. No talk, no nothing, chup still. I am going to do the work. Hallelujah. Jericho is a place where God will fight your battles. God will overcome your oppositions. God will break down those walls. God will open the city gate. It is a place where you need to go where God will take your battle and say, it is my battle. You don't have to fight. Keep still. Jericho. Hallelujah. Listen, church. The intention of the children of God was not to capture Jericho. Hallelujah. They were passing by. They were supposed to possess the land of Canaan. Jericho was just a passing by. Hallelujah. Sometime in your life, you have to capture something and overcome something in your life before you can go to the open door where God has for you. You might make peace with the very thing that is causing you problem, but the very thing that is causing your problem will come and steal your peace away. If you don't capture it, sometimes you've got to pass by certain things. You've got to overcome certain things to be divinely positioned in your life. Because there are some things in your life that you're allowing to happen. Hallelujah. There are some things in your life that you think is not going to destroy you. Hallelujah. You have become too comfortable with it. Because it's not robbing my peace right now, I'm okay with it. I have adapted myself to live with this deformity, with this habit, this stinking habit. I've allowed myself to live with this furniture of Satan in my life. Now at this moment is not really bothering me, but sooner or later it will come and steal your peace if you don't capture it and conquer it. And let it collapse and crumble like the walls of Jericho and then pass by. The very thing, the very thing, I'm going to close here. The very thing that you're allowing, Brother Sebastian, hallelujah, the very thing that you're allowing is keeping your treasure away. Listen to me. I'm not going to quote scripture now. The reason why God wanted the people to destroy the walls of Jericho. God could have found another way for them to go to Canaan. But God said, you've got to capture this. This walls that is fortified. No man can penetrate through this. I will show you how to divinely position yourself. And then I move forward. And I will destroy that big opposition. And you shall see my glory. But the objective is not only for me to destroy it. I want you to go into Jericho and take all their treasures. You need it. Because the devil never owns anything. Everything that he has, he stole it. So take what's stolen. He said, you've got to go. This gate, listen to me. This gate is a stop sign. Is a stop sign. 
Nobody can get in, nobody can get out. It's 245. But I will show you my glory and I will show you my power. If you divinely position yourself, you will go into it and take everything that the enemy has stolen and you will walk in abundance into your promised land. But if you go this way, you will not inherit the riches that is in the walls of Jericho, the city of Jericho. If you don't listen to me and put your ark in front of there and put the priest and then follow and keep quiet and don't blow your trumpet, you will not inherit the treasures that is in there. Because the stop sign will stop you. How many of you, the stop sign is stopping you? Number one, you've got to stop going in circles. Gilgal. Number two, go with your man of God. Have a covenant relationship with your local house, the church. Number two, go to the house of God, Bethel. Pass the test of obedience. Number three. Muni Balega. Confront your opposition. But be divinely positioned. The Bible says in James 4.17. 4.7. Submit to God. Be divinely positioned. Then resist the walls of Jericho. It will fall. For some of you, there's a job on inside the walls of Jericho. There's a business. There's a good husband and a good wife waiting there. Marriage restoration. A good car, a good house. But you are going through the opposition. You're going to Gilgal, you're going to Bethel. But the fear of Jericho is putting you backwards. You are not prepared to confront your opposition. You are not prepared because you feel that if I take the third step, I'm committing myself too much in the things of God. Allow God Fight your battles. Secret battles. Allow God to fight. Secret battles. Allow God to fight. But God will never fire, fight your battle. If you don't position yourself. And positioning. pertains to your heart. Your heart. Whether your heart is full of cockroaches. God doesn't mind. Because he came for cockroaches. Stop running from your opposition. Stop running from your commitment. Some of you think that you are living in God's blessing. You're living in the crumbs. The best is yet to come. When the walls of Jericho collapsed, I've got a whole lot of stuff to preach, a whole lot of stuff to teach. I'll do it next week. When the walls of Jericho collapsed, the children of God just went in. Mahala. Gratis, free. Just take, take. That's the kingdom of God. That's the kingdom of God. God is a giver. He's a giver. When the children of God after slavery came out of Egypt, they just went to the neighbors, just went to the people. Hey, I want that gold jewelry. I want that diamond. I want all that gold. I want everything. They took and they loaded. One night they become, became billionaires. 
Whenever the men of God fought a war, defeated the enemy, the Bible said they took spoils. They took everything. And they became richer and richer and richer. The enemy has stolen too much, my brother. Too much for you. It's now restoration. It's now payback. You got to get aggressive sometime. Hallelujah. And say no is no. You can't steal my family. You can't steal my joy. You can't make my heart so hard. Anymore. Because Jesus died for my heart. Give me a heart of flesh. My wounds are healed. My past is past. My future is bright. And I'm walking into my promised land. But before I walk into Jordan. Into Canaan. I'm going to cross my Jericho. But this time, say this time, I'm going to position myself. When Tuesday comes to come to church, no other agendas unless you've got no transport. You've got to wake up and be in the house of God. You've got to be divinely positioned. It's a commitment that you have to make. Time for serving God on your goma goma is over. Because the devil is sitting on your goma goma also. When you wake up from your goma goma to come into the house of God, then his backside burns. So he don't follow you. You can't come to church, but I tell you, if I phone you and say, I've got a million rand deal, he's just going to come and sign. You'll see how fast you'll go. You'll end up at your neighbor's house. Can I borrow your car, please? (laughs) Better priorities. Priorities. I made up my mind 31 years ago that God is the driver's seat of my life. And I tell you, there's so much of things comes to upset my priorities. But because I made up my mind, I tramp it under the ground and I say I will never back down I took a holiday I take two days holiday last week a lekker vacancy we went to the bush lodge there resort in Aquadome the Aquadome that side is a nice place how many of you been there Aquadome is just about an hour drive the Val side river lodge beautiful lodges but it was too short, two days. I just wanted to have a siesta time and just relax, reset. And uh, my granddaughter was with me, having race with me, sprinting, kept me busy. Because of priorities, that I need to be in church, I need to prepare for the food for today. Cut two days short and be in the house of God again. Nothing stopped me from taking more days. I've got elders and things that can. But the word that God has given me for today would not have been delivered to you. Let's stand in the presence of God. Every one of you are victorious in Christ. Your job is waiting on the other side of Jericho. Or maybe inside of Jericho. The Bible says, He'll make your enemies at peace with you. He'll make your enemies your footstool. Because they went inside the city that wanted to keep them outside. And when they got inside, they took treasures. Right where... You feel is the enemy's camp. There's a blessing for you. God will turn it into a blessing. And I pray that you'll be blessed. I pray those doors open up. But sometimes commitment is needed. Priorities need to be changed. 10% of everything belongs to God. 10% of your time, which is 17 and a half hours per week. 
And some of us give two hours on a Sunday, hey, too much for God. Seventeen and a half hours, seven days a week. You need to be doing God's work. We give two hours and we say it's too much. But you can give your boss nine hours a day. Get your priorities right, your schedule. You're giving two hours on a Sunday, start with another one and a half hour on Tuesday or one hour. We have one hour on Tuesday, three hours. Slowly increase it with witnessing. Come and clean the church a little bit. You are making inroads into the enemy's territory. Though you're doing God's work, you're making inroads into the enemy's territory. Meaning the more you get closer to God, the more you're taking from what the enemy has stolen from you. I am not satisfied with who I am. The stewards and ushers spoke this morning on excellency. And I said, excellency is making your goal post a little further every year to achieve it. I want to be a multi-millionaire. I don't have it now. Commitments of the church and commitments of everything is too much. The economy is bad. But that doesn't stop me from prophesying over my life. That nothing stopped me from waiting on God for an idea that I can turn into millions. Nothing stopped me from working. If God can provide manna, He can provide meat to Elijah with a raven, God can provide for you. May whatever you're doing turn into riches. May whatever you are endeavoring turn into success. May your life be a life of prosperity and blessing. That's who God is. Because most of the riches that came to his children in the Bible just came by the supernatural provision of God. As long as you are positioned, positioning is very important. Say, Heavenly Father, I come to you in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord Jesus, I thank you that I am divinely positioned in the church, covenant with the man of God, serving in your kingdom. Lord, from today, I believe that I will overcome my opposition. And as I am divinely positioned, my battle will become your battle. Every walls of Jericho that is stopping my promotion, stopping my job, stopping my increase, stopping my peace shall crumble. And I will get into the city gates uh, and I will receive an inheritance of overflow in the mighty name of Jesus. Every chain, every shackles, every stoppages, every blockages is broken down by the blood of Jesus. And I am prosperous in the mighty name of Jesus. No good thing shall be withheld from me in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Let's give the Lord a hand. Glory to God. You may be seated. Amen. Can I have one calendar here, please? Amen. Our calendars are ready. 2023 calendar. I already got the theme for next year. The theme for next year is a year of divine harvest. Amen. Whatever you sowed this year, you shall harvest next year. But some of you before December, remember about four years, five years ago, I spoke about a seed, 365 ren, seed. A seed is very important. 
you got November and December to save your 365 seed. One rand for each day next year. So sow yourself prosperous for each day. Before you walk into your next day, your one rand seed is there for your harvest. In the mighty, those who believe in the seed sowing. This is not a must, this is not compulsory. Those who believe in the sowing and harvest, sowing and reaping. Before end of December, you need to get your 365 rand seed. When we're having the crossover service, you come and plant that seed in the name of Jesus. And we're going to pray over it, that you walk every day into new harvest in Jesus' name. If you, if you are in the position to sow 3,665, 36,000, whatever you, it's your sacrifice. But I'm bringing it very low, 365. If you haven't got the money, buy some socks from Chinese Trade Center, sell it, you'll have that money. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And I know the power of seed. And I just said to somebody, I'm going to sow my eighth car into somebody's life. I sold seven. I'm going to sow my eighth car. The person know it, I told him. I'm going to sow my eighth car into somebody. The car is now being repaired and being done up 100%. I'm going to sow it into you because I need to give a sacrificial offering because I need millions. I cannot give one cent. Hallelujah. In the mighty name. I'm trusting God for my car now because I'm going to sell the Elantra also in the might. So I'm going to buy something expensive, cheap. In the name of God will honor his word. God will honor his principle of sowing in the mighty name of Jesus. So yes, I can do a whole lot with the car, with it, but I'm going to sow the eighth car in the name of Jesus. I practice what I preach in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. So the calendar is here, beautiful calendar. I want to thank uh, Brother Sebastian and my son for taking time designing it. And think the calendar is expensive. For well, printing of this calendar is quite expensive. So don't waste it. Put it on your kitchen, your lounge. And if you're going to take, it, take one for your neighbor, you're welcome. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. They will be giving out this calendar in the front and in the back. Let's stand. We'll close. Let us meet you on Tuesday. I've got a powerful word for you and I'm going to pray with you. Let us get divinely positioned. Make that sacrifice. Make that sacrifice. In the mighty name of Jesus. If you haven't got a transport, start organizing from today. Somebody who's got a transport, you can come with them. Those that are online, you're welcome to join us. Heavenly Father, I thank you for your children. I cover them under your precious blood. I pray the love, the joy, the peace, the favor, oh God, the grace, the mercy, the provision, the protection be upon them till we meet again in Jesus' name. God richly bless you. Have a wonderful week. God bless you. We invite you to become a partner in our global ministry which is touching lives and transforming situations all over the world. When you become a partner, you are investing in fertile soil and the Lord will richly reward you with heaven's best. Church banking details are on the screen. And if you'd like to sow a seed of honor, directly deposit it into Dr. Ryan's personal account. For e-wallets, apps like Cash Send, Standard Bank Instant Money or any other instant cash services, kindly use our church WhatsApp number to send the voucher number as well as collection pin. Because when you sow in good soil, indirectly your money is going to places where you cannot go. When you partner with the Kingdom Vision, God will make sure that your needs are provided for. So sow your seed today.